It's 2024 and there are more cozy games than ever for you to play on the Nintendo Switch. And with there being so many cozy games releasing each and every month, there's so many of them that just fall through the cracks and don't get talked about enough. So today I'm going to go through some underrated cozy games that I think deserve a little bit more love. Now the first few cozy games we're going to cover are some of Nintendo's first party titles because for some reason these games often get missed out on best cozy games lists and these are actually some of my all-time favorite cozy games so we're going to quickly talk about them. First up we have Luigi's Mansion 3 and this to me is actually one of my favorite puzzle games of all time. But the thing I love about Luigi's Mansion is the fact that you never really feel like you're solving puzzles. You just feel like you're playing a really enjoyable game and it almost tricks you into thinking, which I actually really enjoy. And this will see you play as Luigi, who tries to rid the mansions of ghosts and try and save his friends after a vacation gone wrong. These puzzles are unlike anything I've played before. They're honestly so creative and you even get a goo version of Luigi that can pass through like grates. And this just adds another layer to each of the puzzles. I really enjoy this. You can often find this on sale nowadays. And I definitely think people just sleep on it because it's a first party title. Another first party title that I am still obsessed with to this day is Yoshi's Crafted World. Even now, aesthetically, this is one of my favorite games of all time. And I love the fact that there's an amiibo of Yoshi that is literally crafted to go alongside this game, which honestly, I really need to get my hands on. This is an adorable platformer that sees you make your way through levels made from cartons, paper, and other household items, and sees you try and find baby Bowser before he harnesses the power to make his wildest dreams come true. Again, this is a game best picked up when on sale as it's not the longest, but it also packs in a ton of character. I just adore the way this looks. I adore the way this plays. And honestly, it slept on so much when people talk about the best cozy games on the Switch. So if you can find it on offer, definitely check it out. Now, if you're looking for an adorable game to chill out with and relax, then I think Pokemon Snap is a fantastic pick. Again, on offer as full prices, a little bit cheeky. This is honestly such a chill game and a beautiful game at that, which is honestly not really feedback we commonly get for Pokemon games. If you have always loved Pokemon as a concept, but not really enjoyed the gameplay that goes alongside a Pokemon game, which sees you battling, catching Pokemon, and level grinding to do different gyms, then this might be the game for you, as this just mainly focuses on taking pictures of really cute Pokemon who are out in the wild living their best lives. This has to be the best looking Pokemon game I've ever seen. I love the way the Pokemon look. I love the way the Pokemon interact with one another and interact with the world as well. Now, although at times the game can feel a little bit grindy, seeing you replay certain levels at different times of the day, there truly is nothing that beats the experience of going to a brand new area for the first time though, and getting to see Pokemon you haven't seen in the other areas, interact, float around, fly around, run around, and just live their lives in a way we've never seen Pokemon do outside of the anime. And again, I just feel like it's a cozy game that no one really speaks about, but deserves so much more love. Another Nintendo Switch exclusive that flew massively under the radar is another code recollection. To me, this has everything I'm personally looking for in a cozy game. It's voice acted, it has cutscenes, it has a gripping story, it's literally like almost a murder mystery, and it also has puzzles alongside of it as well. Now, I will give a word of warning. I think a lot of people were put off by the demo because the pacing of the first part of the game is very slow, but honestly, I've had a fantastic time playing it. In this you play as Ashley, who after getting a letter from her father, who she had long believed to be dead, she sets off in search of him. But this search is not an easy one. And not only does the game have a gripping story, but you also have to face and combat different puzzles as well. And although these puzzles aren't all that difficult, they are a lot of fun to do. And one thing I love about the game is the fact that if you get stuck, there's an inbuilt hint system, so you'll never find yourself going through a walkthrough at any point. And even though there are definitely some slow moments in the game, the overarching story just made me keep on coming back for more, and it's definitely a game that's been underappreciated so far. That's it for the first party games, and next up we have a whole bunch of indies. 
But before we get into that, I just want to talk about a recent release that has come out on Apple Arcade that I think more people should be talking about. And that is Crayola Adventures, who are also the sponsor of today's video. This is a game that has just launched on Apple Arcade and is genuinely unlike anything I've ever seen or played before. As this is an open-ended story game where what you write brings the story to life. Which is not only a fantastic concept for a game, but also makes this a wonderful educational tool as well. As not only will this teach the art of storytelling, it will also involve problem solving, reading and other skills as well. But this is most definitely a game that adults can enjoy as well as children, as the only limit to the story itself is literally your imagination. But not only do you determine the narrative, you're also free to explore the levels, colour things in, draw on them and even customise yourself. And the best part of this being an Apple Arcade game is the fact that there is no microtransactions in it whatsoever. So even though you can play this on your phone, it doesn't feel like a mobile game at all. Be sure to click the link in the description box down below if you're interested, and thank you again for sponsoring today's video. The next cozy game that I think deserves so much more attention than it got is Bandletail. This is the first cozy game I've played in a while that just feels like such a refreshing take. And I've truly been having such a blast playing this in my own time. This is described as being a crafting RPG. And although you do need to level up in order to progress in this game, there's no battling or combat whatsoever. Instead, your XP level grinding is done by crafting. But this isn't actually the reason this has stood out amongst a sea of other cozy games that have been releasing recently. The thing that truly made this special was the dialogue. This had to me what so many other cozy games have been missing lately, and that is an abundance of character. There was never any dialogue I wanted to skip, because each line meant something. Be it the sock being its unbelievably witty self, be it the characters telling you tales about their lives, or simply some useful information that will progress you in the story. Everything was valuable in its own way and it kept me hooked throughout the entire game. In this you play as a Yordle which you can customise yourself who is a furry little creature with a love of all things knitting. But one evening you attend a party that goes drastically wrong where your actions essentially throw the whole land into chaos as the portals that are used for transportation across the world collapse. And now you've been separated from all your friends, you set out to try and fix them. Now the one thing this game is not, is a handholdy experience. This is made by the same people who made Graveyard Keeper, so there is a large focus on the skill tree element, which is absolutely massive, with I think four different skill trees for you to unlock different abilities for, and sometimes it will feel a little bit grindy to get the experience you need in order to unlock something that you need to progress the story. I like to say this is akin to Stardew Valley, where it kind of gives you the absolute basics, but then doesn't tell you much more than that and kind of leaves you to figure it out. Like a big aspect of the game is throwing parties in the different areas that you're at, because apparently Yordles are pretty good at that. And I definitely found myself looking things up in order to help me get the best score on the parties. Hopefully by the time you guys are picking this up, there'll be a little bit better of a wiki situation, making it easier to Google things you're stuck on. But I could truly say I've had a blast playing this. This feels like such a refreshing take on the cozy genre, and I've been having so such a good time playing it. Next is a game that you guys have been asking me to check out for the longest time and I'm so glad I finally did and that is I was a teenage exo colonist. It took me so long to say that word right. So long. <laughs> This is a narrative RPG where all the combat is done through card battles and where the choices you make truly matter. In this, you grow up on an alien planet as you're a part of humanity's first ever extrasolar space colony, meaning that you have the chance to explore this brand new world in all its beauty, but also its dangers as well. And the decisions you make, including the subjects you should study and everything that you learn, will make the colony stronger. And this will not only affect your life, but also all the friends that you're getting to know as well. As you play the game, seasons will pass, you'll have monsters that you need to battle and obstacles that you need to overcome. And sometimes the challenge is to just stay alive. But the truly unique part of this game is that replayability is the entire point. As each of your previous lives you have lived has a meaning beyond death, as every single thing that you do will transfer into collectible cards which you can then use in your next life. 
And with over 29 endings to discover, you can figure out exactly how many lifetimes it will take to save your colony. I am literally so sad it took me so long to discover this game, but I'm so glad you guys recommended it. It is absolutely fantastic and I can't recommend it enough. And this is most definitely a game that more people need to talk about. Next up is Pixel Cafe. I cannot believe it took me until 2024 to stumble across this game. It is truly exactly what I've been looking for. This is a restaurant management game that has literally everything I have ever wanted. Now at first the game starts off pretty simple. All you need to do is serve people some coffee. But as the game progresses it adds in more and more orders and before you notice it you're actually carrying out some pretty complicated stuff. Now each day you work you earn some money that you can kind of choose how you spend. You can either use it to upgrade your equipment, so for example being able to serve two coffees at once instead of just one, or you can kind of upgrade yourself instead. The nice thing about this is this game is fully made to be played with a controller. So you don't have to worry about the PC version being better because you could play with a mouse and this version just playing a bit awkwardly. It is fully designed for controller use, so it plays wonderfully. It just might make your brain think a little bit. And the nice part is they've now introduced three different gameplay modes. There was originally just one and this one mode has become the hardest mode of the three to play. So you can definitely choose to have a more laid back and chilled experience. Now there is a story that goes alongside all of this that is about a young girl trying to make her way in the world. I will say the story has a lot of like family trauma in it and can definitely be skipped if you're just after the gameplay experience. But I do love that a story is a part you can experience if you choose. This game has kind of consumed me recently and I actually found it on one of you guys' suggestions on a previous video when I said I'm looking for a cafe simulation game. This is everything I wanted and I cannot stop playing it. Next is another game that's just come out and I wish more people were talking about this as well. It needed more hype and I don't understand why it doesn't have it. And that's Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley. This stood out to me for the exact same reason Bandletail stood out. It is a game with so much character. And again, absolutely no combat whatsoever. The writing is genuinely so special and it makes you feel the full spectrum of human emotion from having you laugh, having you cry, having you smile to even having you slightly afraid at times. But this is all made all the better by the gorgeous art style and the beautiful music that go alongside of it. This sees you play as Snufkin, who is on the quest to find Moomin Troll after his hibernation. But what should have just been a small walk to a bridge to meet his friend turns into a huge adventure that sees you travel around Moomin Valley, helping creatures, playing music so they help you, and getting rid of the parks filled with police officers. All of this allowing nature to finally return to the valley. It's one of those games that I just found really easy to play and I was loving every single moment I was playing it. It's not often that I find a cozy game that completely consumes me in this way because I had the TV off, I had nothing else going on, just me and this game and it was a complete vibe. This is a great pick regardless of if you grew up with the characters or if you have no idea about any of them and this is your first time seeing them. As proven by the fact that I had an absolute blast playing this but originally I was calling Moomin Troll Moo Mint Roll and I'm so glad that moment has been immortalized on the internet when I streamed this for the first time forever. But regardless of what you call him this game has been an absolute blast. I can't recommend it enough. Then we have Sea Salt Chronicles, another game that has completely flown under my radar but is absolutely fantastic. This is a story driven adventure that will see you and a crew of misfits embark on a journey to uncover the mystery of your captain's disappearance. This will see you go to different islands, uncover secrets and resolve issues between the crew members. And the entire story is affected by the choices that you make. I love that there is nothing else that looks like this on the Switch and I can't believe it's taken me so long to check this out. Another game that deserves so much more love is Beacon Pines. Now I know I've spoken about this a lot on my channel but I think in the greater cozy world this game is just thoroughly underappreciated. But do be warned this is definitely a creepy cozy game and although there's nothing graphic depicted or anything of that nature it definitely has some unsettling vibes at times. The story follows Luca and his friends after they notice some strange goings on in Beacon Pines that no one else has really noticed. 
So they decide to check it out for themselves. But what makes this game truly unique isn't just the story. It's the way in which you interact with the story and the way the story branches. Because in this game, not only do you play as the main character, Luca, you also play as the narrator of the story. And it's your job to use these things called charms to fill in the blanks of the story and try and find the one branch of the storyline that doesn't end badly. But the thing I love about Beacon Pines is it rewards you regardless of whether the path you went down is the correct one or not. As although you may get a disastrous ending, you might learn something along the way that can affect one of the other branches and hopefully lead you to somewhere better. Beacon Pines' story is absolutely fantastic. I could genuinely never tell where it was going to go or where it was going to end. And this meant that I basically finished the game over an entire weekend as I was absolutely obsessed. I genuinely can't recommend this game enough. To me, this is one of my favorite indie games on the Switch of all time, and I absolutely love it. Next, we have our only farming sim on this entire list, and this is Doraemon Story of Seasons, Friends of the Great Kingdom. Now, I haven't always been the nicest about Story of Seasons games, but this to me might be one of their best. And the reason why I love it above all the other Story of Seasons games is the fact that this just has a fantastic story going alongside the pretty solid farming sim mechanics that Story of Seasons games are already known for. And the best part is you can enjoy this regardless of whether you already know Nobi and his friends. The story itself sees Nobi run away from his parents after they were getting him to do his chores and he crash lands on this random planet. And after figuring out that it's going to be a little bit of time before they can get their spaceship up and running again, they decide to live with a boy named Loomis and help him on his farm. The thing I really enjoy about this though is because you're playing as a little boy, this kind of takes out some of the big relationship mechanics of the game. And instead of the focus being on who you befriend and who you marry, the focus of the game is instead shifted to the relationships of the characters between each other. And this to me just kind of made the world feel more alive than any Story of Seasons game has done previously. So this is definitely a great farming sim for those people who have been wanting a little bit more than just the basics. Next up, we have What Remains of Edith Finch. Now, this is another game for cozy gamers who don't mind a little bit of creepiness, as this is a first-person narrative experience with similar vibes to that of, like, Firewatch. This is a collection of stories that tells the tale of a family in Washington state. And the magic of this game is in its storytelling, where each story focuses on a different family member and the way the story is told is uniquely tailored to each of the family members. This is such an experience and one I'm so sad I've never spoken about before. And although it's based around sadness, it truly has some beautiful moments. The final game on today's list is Ooblets. This is one of my favorite cozy games of all time and I truly feel like not enough people talk about it. Not only do I love this game, it is also incredibly good value for money as they just seem to be adding more and more in free updates. Ooblets is a cross between being a farming sim but also a monster taming game. But Ooblets really took the cozy approach to battles and instead of it being like actual physical battles, instead they've opted with it being dance battles, which you wind up doing with this card-based system. And in Ooblets, you can really pick your own fun as there is a ton of different things you can do. First up, you have the story, which involves going to different areas around the map, trying to restore the internet or the Ubernet as they call it, having to do dance battles as you go but you also have a farm to tend to that has an entire purpose, as not only is this your main way to get money, you also need the items you can grow on your farm in order to challenge wild ooblets to a battle so you can catch them. And then you also have building up your entire oobler army, as not only do you need ooblets to work on your farm to help you out, ooblets also come in three different varieties. You get the common colors, the uncommon colors, and then the gleamies, which is the ooblets equivalent of shiny Pokemon. But in my opinion, they're better than shiny Pokemon because they have a little rainbow trail when they run around. Again, this game has a ton of character packed into it, which just makes it even better. But considering it's one of the best games on the Switch, it's thoroughly and truly underrated. That's it for my underrated cozy games list. Let me know in the comments down below if I've missed any of your favorites. And if you want to be kept up to date with everything that's going on on the Switch right now in cozy gaming news, click this video here.